Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel titled Underground. I came up with the title. I was thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran. Uh, Christians are severely persecuted for staying the word of God. We're going to try to make this video last. I got Patches here. He's in the lap. Can't seem too well. I'm not feeling too good, him or me. And so, it's my second attempt at doing this video, and we'll, we'll see if I come, I'm able to finish it. I'm not a scholar. I'm just someone who loves to talk about the Lord. I love making videos uh, to get the word out to people. There's been such an increase the last few couple months on my YouTube channel. It's just a blessing from God and, and my obedience to God and, and that uh, speaking the word and get the word out about God in these last days. There's a lot going along with uh, Israel right now, and I'm, I'm working on a different video tomorrow. I'm also anxious. I've got uh, a book coming in about some writings about Sir Isaac Newton. A lot of people talk about how, uh, you know, science doesn't prove the Bible. And he, he was a good Christian man, and a lot of writings he's put out there. So I'm excited to get that book and read it and to uh, make a video on that. I'm trying to do the best I can. I've got a lot of things going on in my life, but I'm trying to uh, hang in there and, and get things done uh, because I do believe we're in the last few days and moments, and I'm wanting to motivate people to study God's Word. I know there's a lot of times some of these videos, I have a lot of people making comments and, and saying things, and uh, that's the way it is. You know, people will disagree. There's a lot going on, a lot of times. Uh, I, this is a kind of a mixture of some videos I've done before in the past. Uh, it just I know I've had some comments. Some people are just not getting it. So I, I want to explain more about the rapture and, the, and what it really is, which is the harvest for the Gentiles. Rapture is for the body of Christ. It is not for the Jewish people. There will be people saved during tribulation. Those will be Jewish people. The more I study scriptures, the more I believe they will not be Gentiles. It will be Jewish people. Unless uh, some Gentiles have not heard the word of God. I should put that in there. I should explain a little bit more. Some Gentiles may be. They could be Arabs. They, they could be other places in the world that have not really been taught the scripture. And during this time, they come to know God. So yes, some Gentiles uh, can be saved. But it's mainly for the Jewish people. It's for a judgment on a non-godly world and for bringing uh, the Jews back to obedience with God. But I cannot totally say that it won't be a single Gentile saved during that time uh, because I always leave room for error because I'm learning. But uh, it's a very if. <laughs> I mean, there's as I go into this, it's... When I'm going to more about the, the, the Word of God and Scriptures, I just see the Gentiles, uh, the body of Christ, uh, as I said, uh, before the rapture. Because there's a lot of people, are, especially ministers, are doing that. I think it's a disservice. They're putting things out there for left-behind letters for family. And, you know, I've had men go on there and say, we're, sow the, we're sowing the seed for those left behind. And those left behind are being given over to a, a strong delusion by God himself for not believing the truth. So God sends it. He's our creator. They're not going to believe it. And I know that hurts. I have people in my family that are very dear to me that uh, at this moment aren't saved. But I start out with Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 36. A lot of times I'm long-winded. A lot of times I like to uh, read big parts of chapters because uh, I'm not too big. I mean, I'll in here is... I think at one part I'm going to use Revelation uh, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. But most of the time I don't like to do one or, two, three, one or two verses. I like to read whole chapters in my studies and when I do a video to give more understanding, uh, to uh, see how the wording is, and also to, it, you know, people can twist things. You know, they take a verse here, a verse here, a verse there, and jump all over the place. And they, they twist and make their own things and kind of twist things around. And that's that's just not the way I like to study. I always use, I have uh, 
the Israel Bible and the Complete Jewish Study Bible. I use those when I do the uh, Old Testament. I have the Greek English New Testament, and I use uh, Strong's and Concordance when I read the New Testament to to come up with uh, uh, for the Greek. You know, the New Testament is written in Greek. Old Testament is written in Hebrew. The Bible is not English, so you have to be careful in how the words are translated. But you can, if you study, God will give you, that's what the Holy Ghost is. God is in our studies. Romans 11, 1 through 36. I see, say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people when he, when he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down the alt thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And that's one of my cats in the background. Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. A lot of times he talks about remnant, he talks about the Jewish people. And by grace then is it no more, and of works otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. But then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election Election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and recommence unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and have bowed down their back all way. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Jew. Sorry, I'm very tired. Unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more than their fullness? For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify in mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, I might have some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? But if the first fruit be the holy lump, also is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a walled olive tree, wert grafted in among them. Uh, the olive tree being... Israel, and he's talking about the Jews. This is Paul's writing. It's talking about the Jews. I apologize. Talking about the Gentile people being grafted into the family of God. And among them, and with them partakest of the root of the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if the, thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. That will say, then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity, uh, severity of God, on them which fell, severity but toward thee, goodness. If they continue in, if thou continue in the goodness of otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Meaning that even though he's blinded Israel, he's going to bring them back later. This is during the tribulation. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is walled by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I will not be brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles be come in. That's where we're at now in Bible prophecy. We're in the fullness of the Gentiles. And a lot of people, a lot of things are going on right now. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people are seeing different things. 
I understand the confusion. Uh, some people have been mocking and, and make comments about how, you know, these Bible guys don't know what they're talking about. Um, we're the body of Christ. So we have different parts of the body. Therefore, you have different people on different levels learning things. Some, some, the stars are for signs and wonders. And some have better gift at looking at the stars than I do. And I'm not talking about uh, in the horoscope and all that stuff. That's, that's ungodly. But the story, like the Revelation 12 sign that was done in, in 2017, September 23rd, 2017, six years ago. And now, six years later, we see the sign again. Uh, it has meaning. That's just what I'm excited about this book I'm getting about Sir Isaac Newton. I, I, I've uh, ordered I've ordered a lot of scripture things that I've, I've studied. I've just got the Concise Bible Dictionary, and, and I got the Spurgeon and Wesley and Henry parallel uh, commentaries. You know, there's a lot I'm studying and I'm excited about. Um, that I, I got some money, and I'm able to work on some stuff in the house, and, and I'm actually able to uh, build back up my my library, like the book over here, I got Josephus Works. It broke my heart a year ago when the tree fell on my house and destroyed a lot of stuff. And, and I had 20 years worth of notes and I lost it all. I don't keep things on a computer. I'm old. I like to write things down. And the reason I do that, I could easily make take 10 minutes, prepare something, and, and read out of the Bible. Or I may spend three or four hours writing it down because I have trouble writing. And then doing it that way, but it puts it on my heart. So that's how I study God's word. Everybody has their own different way. But the uh, right now we're in the harvest of the Gentiles, and it's it's about about the end. You know, the rapture is about to happen, and everything's going to go to Israel. And so it talks, and I'm going to read some more. It's about the tribulation Jews. And so all Israel shall be saved, and it's written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away in godliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. In other words, he, you know, he, they're against Jesus. It helps us. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet ha have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, that these also now not believe that through your mercy they also may attain mercy. For God hath clung to them all in the belief, unbelief, but he might have mercy upon all. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him against, uh, recompensed unto him again? For I for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. So there's there's a reason for uh, what he had done. He God pre-planned everything. He knew before the beginning of this world what was going to go on. So he planned pre-planned everything. Patches there, but uh, for doing what he did with the Jewish people, that like I said, we grafted the Gentiles into it. Now we have Romans 9, 14 through 24. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he has said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then is it not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared through all at all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will have he will be hardened. Thou shalt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? So shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay? of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto, unto glory, even us whom he hath called, 
not only the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Of the seven churches in Revelation, the last church God talks to before uh, Revelation 4, because Revelation is the church in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, as it was known. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know that works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man could shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, O make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are the Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make to them come, and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth. This is talking about tribulation, just not just the day of the Lord. And this is uh, meaning for the Gentiles that we are at the end, end time church. This is talking about Church of Philadelphia as an example of it, that he is not going to keep us here during tribulation. My father, I just move around. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make, and this is very important about this crown, I'll get back to this. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. <coughs> Excuse me, and I will write upon him my new name. So in the future, after tribulation, after the millennium kingdom, God is going to bring his, his uh, my before the millennium kingdom, he's going to bring uh, this big city that he's created for us in heaven down to earth. Greek translation, um, when I talked about uh, Revelation 3, 10 through 11, because you have kept my word about patience and endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try these who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have, so that one may seize your crown. Yes, Pat. Come here. So, I'm trying to end this up. He's one out of the room. Um, this crown they keep talking about is a crown of righteousness. And what's the crown of righteousness? It's two, two parts. It's living. It's known for living for God. It's your lifestyle, and it's also longing for Jesus. About the rapture, watch, watching for the rapture. And that's what we're doing right now. A lot of people are excited about the rapture. A lot of things are going on. And uh, people are like uh, uh, looking at different dates. And people are attacking people. Oh, this date's coming. Like I did a video about the uh, Feast of Trumpets. An example of the rapture. Rapture. I'm sorry. I'm trying to rush through here real quick. And uh, my little buddy's upset. I got to give him a shot. It's the time of year he has allergies. Uh, so... My crew, bud. Our animals talk to us. I don't know what he's saying, but he's saying something. He, he wants me to do something with him. But the point is, um, I'm sorry about my thought. I lose my train of thought. I get distracted. The crown of righteousness is, is what we get for people like myself that are anxious for the, and longing for Christ's coming. And I'm looking up to see when the rapture takes place. And then everybody's scoffing, saying, Oh, it's not going to take place, or you said it'd be this day, it hasn't happened. Well, it means we're just getting closer to it. You know, everything's coming close. It's it's all going, going uh, coming to God's plan. And the reason for it is, is, and I use Thessalonians a lot by Paul, because he was talking to an early church in Thessalonica, where people, he left, and some people, after he'd done some training to them, people were saying things, so he wrote the letters. 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians were letters to this early church, and he was talking about the rapture then. And then a lot of people get upset and say, well, this is something that just came out a few hundred years ago talking about the rapture. No, it was talked years, years ago to early church being formed. So, yes, the rapture is, is something that's not, you know, not brand new. It's something that we're looking for, and, and we're at the time. And so 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, it's what, what we're looking for. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will come, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's exciting times we're living in. God's about to call the body of Christ up. It is a sobering time. There's war right now in Israel. I believe the next war we're going to see is, is from what I understand in Scripture, it's a Psalm 83 war. Everybody's talking about Ezekiel 38. There's a big difference between Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38. Uh, years, there's a gap of time. Uh, in my previous videos, go back and look. I, I go in great de uh, detail about those. Excuse me. And I'm sorry for rushing tonight. I uh, can tell my face is red. I'm in a lot of pain. But uh, I wanted to get this out because tomorrow I'm, I'm working on something else. And, and I, I get one-sided. If I'm doing something, i got to get it done. You know, and I'm, I've been just fighting, fighting uh, this video. Um to make this video and again i apologize for speeding up but it's so important to give understanding to people or to motivate them to study god's word but uh we're, we're like i said we're, we're at the cusp and we're excited about it there's there's nothing wrong to be excited about looking for god i've had people attack say well you're not thinking of the jewish people or your what kind of christian love do you have for these other people i have great love for them because the moment that we're out of the way god's going to deal with the jewish people in those things, bring those people back to them, bring them back into that olive tree, graft them back in, and have them forever. And it's what the Jewish people are wanting. They're wanting God. So, you know, to be there's no shame to be excited and ready to go. Uh, God is everything to me. I've had a lot of people tell me, even in my family, you're just obsessed with God. Yes, yes, I am. God is everything to me. My whole life, everything's God. And so I'm excited to be with God and and. I have others that are God. My my daughter had uh, unfortunately. I, I've got one beautiful grandson by my daughter. Uh, he's he's nine, almost ten years old. Jack Robert, and uh, he's a very good Christian boy. But I have three grandkids that she had miscarriages, and so uh, as Pat's trying to come up my chair, and yeah, here he comes. And so, <laughs> come here, buddy. And so uh, I have three grandkids. My daughter had three miscarriages, and they're in heaven waiting for Papa. And I look forward to seeing. I don't know if they're boys or girls. I don't know. And so that's something I look forward to. And uh, it's something I have to long for. I have family, you know, in heaven I'm waiting for. People who comment on my videos, there's so many people I'm so ready, excited to, uh, to see. And I apologize. I should make a note sometimes to talk about some of the people making comments. I'm excited to uh, be with them. I had one gentleman say something the other day. He was living in Wisconsin. He's commented on a lot of my videos. Wish we were nearby. We could get close to each other and see each other. Uh, but I, I commented back that uh, I'm too far away from Wisconsin where I'm at. I'm the way southern part of Illinois. But I look forward to meeting him in the clouds and being, you know, he's my Christian brother. So I can't wait to meet him, you know, and. There's so many people that I'm anxious to wait to meet. But uh, we're close. The time can happen any moment. We look at different feasts that have different meanings. And so, you know, I'm excited. If it's a feast time, it's in the fall. You know, the, the, the first four feasts have been fulfilled. So, you know, but the rapture can happen today. It can happen tomorrow. Uh, a lot of feasts have meanings. But you're also looking at other things that Jesus will fulfill. And that will be his... His uh, second coming. And then the start of the Millennium Kingdom. And then the end of the Millennium Kingdom. If I say that correctly, I'm sorry, my speech. So there, there's a lot of things that the, Jesus can fulfill the feast in the, the fall, and not one of them be the rapture. But we have high watch days, like right now, we're still in the high watch time for the rapture. So there's a lot going on. I'm excited. Uh, there's been so much going on the last two months. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna work on uh, uh, making a video over Israel, and 
I want to uh, ask for people to have prayer for Israel uh, because of the war they're in right now. I'll talk more about the Psalm 83 war. Uh, I believe that's the next major war that Israel is going to be involved with. Looks like my cat was able to open the door back here. But uh, we don't know if that's right now, if that's the start of the war. You know, Psalm 83 war, we'll, we'll have to see how this plays out. Or if uh, this is how it kind of fast tracks in the long run, able to uh, do the uh, uh, peace agreement with Saudi Arabia. Because I believe that that agreement that is signed uh, will uh, bring about the uh, two-state solution for Israel. And I believe that's the, the catalyst for the uh, Psalm 83 war. And it could be right now because they're trying to keep that peace treaty from happening. That's why they they're, they had the attack this morning in Israel. And that's what's going on there. They're trying to keep that peace agreement from happening. So a lot's going on. But before the Antichrist comes about or anything like that, he's in the back wing somewhere right now. Uh, we have to be out of the way. And that's the body of Christ. And right after the body of Christ is out of the way, then God allows things happen with the Antichrist and also allows for the uh, dealing with the Jewish people. So it was just kind of a quick video. I know I rushed through everything. Uh, it's getting late. My buddy here, is, it's, it's weird. He senses when I'm, I'm having a bad day and he knows that I'm having a lot, a lot of pain today, muscle problems. And, and so uh, it's time for this old man to lay down. God bless you. Thank you so much for, for uh, looking at my video. I, I'm really excited that I started this four years ago. It's just a handful of people watching my videos and now it's es escalated. So that means God is is using me, even someone like me who has trouble with memory issues because of health, speech, and everything else, and he's still, I'm able to uh, be active and do what I want to do. And there's so many people, I encourage listening to all the different people because we're all part of the body of Christ on YouTube. And the things, I mean, we don't have to agree on timing of the rapture. That rapture, sorry, that does not take away from salvation. We can disagree, you know, but. It just encourages people to study more. Someone sees some certain things better than other people. And so that's that's what it's all about. And as I say, as everything else, we, we should pray to bring more people to God and to fulfill the what Jesus was doing on earth, and that was building the kingdom, and to pray for the Jewish people. And also pray for the Palestinians. Not those that's causing the trouble, but there's a lot of good Palestinians that uh, are caught in this mess. Men, women, and children. And we should be praying for them. And I long for that day to be in heaven and meet everyone. Thank you.